Good morning and welcome to worship on this seventh Sunday after Epiphany. Each Sunday morning at 8.30 and 10.30 a.m. we have in-person services of Holy Communion. We also have a midweek in-person service of Holy Communion each Wednesday at 12.10 p.m. Let us now prepare our hearts and minds for worship during the prelude.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O Lord Jesus, make us instruments of your peace, that where there is hatred, we may so love, where there is injury, pardon, and where there is despair, hope. Grant, O divine Master, that we may seek to console, to understand, and to love in your name. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Genesis. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him. So dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come closer to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother, Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh and lord of all his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen and you shall be near me you and your children and your children's children, as well as your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. I will provide for you there, since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. And he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. And after that, his brothers talked with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, But I say to you that listen, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you, and if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies, do good, and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure 
you get back. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Howard Thurman, the well-known African-American clergyman, theologian, and author, led a U.S. delegation to India on a six-month study tour in 1935-1936. While there, the group met with Mahatma Gandhi, the primary leader of India's independence movement, an architect of nonviolent civil disobedience. Gandhi asked many persistent and pragmatic questions about the black American community and its ongoing struggles for civil rights. The experience with Gandhi and the concept of nonviolent resistance drove Thurman back to the Gospels to discover a new Jesus of Nazareth's commitment to nonviolence. Several years later, Thurman was inspired to write the little book titled Jesus and the Disinherited, in which he explored how Jesus, as a Jewish person, was a member of an oppressed race suffering at the hands of a powerful empire that maintained its control through violence and injustice. Thurman came to see the story of Jesus in the Gospels as a manual of resistance for the poor and disenfranchised, and how it is only through the strength of loving one another that God's justice can prevail. The strength of love is illustrated in our reading from the Hebrew Scriptures this morning as we hear a portion of the Joseph story. Keep in mind that Joseph, of coat of many colors fame, had been sold to Egypt-bound slave traders by his jealous brothers to get rid of him. After many twists and turns and a wrongful imprisonment, Joseph interprets dreams predicting seven years of plenty and seven years of famine, and ends up as the right-hand man to the Pharaoh in charge of stockpiling grain for the coming lean years. The famine hits, and who should come south looking for grain but Joseph's brothers? They meet this great man who is their brother, but they do not recognize him. Intrigue follows. And today's passage from Genesis tells the story of what happens when the brothers make their second trip to Egypt for grain, and Joseph reveals his identity to them. Take in the scene. Here is a man whose brother sold him into slavery, feeding them and the rest of his family in spite of what they did to him welcoming them into Egypt and giving them sanctuary and all that they need to survive. Joseph sees the hand of God in all the terrible things that have happened to him. Somehow, he has worked through his own anger at what his brothers did to him, and he has allowed God to turn that into the strength of love. This is the kind of love that Jesus of Nazareth is talking about in our gospel reading today in this continuation of the Sermon on the Plain. Following on the heels of the blessings and woes we heard in last Sunday's passage, today our Lord says, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, turn the other cheek, give to those who beg, Do to others as you would have them do to you. In the Joseph story, Joseph is doing that. 
He is in a position of great power. He is in charge of Egypt, one of the great powers of that time. Yet he has compassion on his brothers who were so cruel to him. He saves them and extends to them the abundance that he enjoys in his own life. The strength of the love demonstrated by Joseph and by Jesus of Nazareth is not for the faint of heart. Would we be able to forgive our siblings for selling us into slavery? Would we be able to extend the kind of hospitality and help that Joseph gives his family? Do we hold on to resentments? Do we find it difficult to forgive? Do we accept God's forgiveness for our own failures and sins? Can we say, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do? Do we learn from difficult situations and move on? The Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., greatly influenced by Howard Thurman and his book, Jesus and the Disinherited, later wrote in his own 1963 book titled Strength to Love that, and quoting now, hate multiplies hate, violence multiplies violence, and toughness multiplies toughness in a descending spiral of destruction. So when Jesus says, love your enemies, he is setting forth a profound and inescapably, ultimately inescapable admonition. Have we not come to such an impasse in the modern world that we must love our enemies or else? The chain reaction of evil Hate begetting hate, wars producing wars, must be broken, or we shall be plunged into the dark abyss of annihilation. End quote. We know all too well, as we look at the brokenness of our 21st century world, that living with a love your enemies kind of love does not come naturally or easily, given that our human brains are hardwired for survival mode and a me-first, egocentric mentality. Yet, the power of God's love and experience of God's compassion in Jesus the Christ breaks through in word and sacrament to reorient our inward-looking self-centeredness to an outward-looking focus on God and others. Our Lord calls us to live differently because one who has received grace is strengthened and empowered to put on the mind of Christ. Today, as we hear the words of our Lord to love our enemies, do good to those who hate us, bless those who curse us, turn the other cheek, give to those who beg and do to others as we would have them do to us, how do we have the same mind as Christ Jesus? How do we see through his eyes? How do we feel through his heart? How do we learn to respond to the world with his same wholeness and healing love? The strength of love changed and continues to change the world. May we be the love necessary to empower resurrection. For to paraphrase the words of Teresa of Avila, Christ has no body now but ours. No hands, no feet on earth but ours. Ours are the eyes through which he looks compassion on this world. Ours are the feet with which he walks to do good. 
Ours are the hands through which he blesses all the world. Ours are the hands. Ours are the feet. Ours are the eyes. We are his body. Christ has no body now on earth but ours. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O oh God, you teach us to love our neighbors and enemies alike. Encourage your church to follow the leading of your love, especially when it is risky or difficult. Help us to show mercy just as we have first received mercy. Lord, in your mercy, Nurture fields that lie dormant, resting until it is time to bloom again. Bless farmers and all who cultivate the land. Bring forth from buried seed an abundant harvest. Lord, in your mercy. Look upon our world with mercy, that we delight in an abundance of peace. Help us protect those whose lives are marred by war and civil unrest. May political prisoners be released and the voices that challenge us to seek forgiveness and pursue nonviolence be amplified. Lord, in your mercy. Your people cry out for mercy. Console hearts that long for forgiveness. Help us mend broken relationships. Heal bodies that suffer chronic pain or illness. Strengthen and deliver all whose spirits are troubled. Lord, in your mercy. You bind us together into one family. Teach us to forgive one another and to resolve conflicts with humility and patience. Bless families of all shapes and sizes and help us show love to those who are lonely or grieving. Lord, in your mercy. We praise you for the saints who have inherited the fullness of your kingdom. With them, sustain us in faith with your gift of resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray together as we have been taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen.
Our service now begins. Go in peace. Be the light of Christ. Thanks be to God.